When we last left PragerU, we arrived at number 14 on the most viewed list. The inconvenient truth about the Democratic Party. <laughs> oh boy, we're off to a fantastic start. Confederate battle standard, Democratic logo, and a Klansman. It's like the, the Neapolitan of, I don't know. Let's just dive in. When you think about racial equality and civil mm -hmm. rights, which political party comes to mind? The Democratic Party, because they passed the Civil Rights Act under Lyndon B. Johnson. Boom! Right wing destroyed. The Black Panther Party, actually. <laughs> the Republicans or the Democrats? Most people would probably say the Democrats, but this answer Bingo. is incorrect. Oh, neither of them. That is the correct answer, actually. Since its founding in 1820. What's up? Okay, hold on. This is this is ad hom and I'm already getting sidetracked. Take a look at her eyes. This answer is incorrect. Should we be concerned? Since its founding in 1829, the Democratic Party has fought against every major civil rights initiative and has a long history of discrimination. Every civil rights initiative? Are you sure about that? I'm not going to argue against the long history of discrimination, though. This is true. The Democratic Party defended slavery, started the it's Civil true. War, opposed Reconstruction, founded the Ku Klux Klan, imposed segregation, perpetrated lynchings, and fought against the Civil Rights Acts of the 1950s and 1960s. There's a whole bunch of stuff here getting thrown at us that's not exactly correct. And these people would use different arguments. Well, okay, maybe not Carol Swain. Their side of the aisle would use different arguments. Start of the Civil War. Well, actually, it was the Union that started the Civil War when they invaded the South. No, we're not. We're not playing that game, though. Defended slavery. For a while, that was everybody. So this is true. We'll say that. Okay. Start of the Civil War. I mean, okay. In a way, yes. Opposed Reconstruction. How does that work, you think? So they start the Civil War, they lose, and, th and now that they've lost, they're opposing rebuilding the South, huh? How's that work? <sighs> Look, I know it's, it's a complex um, point in American history, but I'm betting we're not going to get that. Founded the Ku Klux Klan. Democratic Party did not found the Ku Klux Klan. I guess some prominent Democrats probably did, but I don't know if that was an official, like, Democratic, uh, party platform. <laughs> Imposed segregation. Yeah, guess what? Even the Union did that. Even the Northern States did that. Even the Union Army had black soldiers in it, but they were segregated from everywhere else everyone else perpetrated lynchings i don't think that was like a party thing <laughs> but yeah okay but worst of all she said fought civil rights act that's not true but against the civil rights acts of the 1950s and 1960s the civil rights acts of the 1950s and 60s jfk really pushed it at the start but then he fucking died and then lyndon b johnson was president when they finally pushed him through lyndon b johnson a democrat so what what criteria is going to be used there that like there was a couple democrats who voted against it does she get into it i haven't seen this one before so maybe she will let's hear in let's contrast go. the republican party was founded in 1854 uh -oh. as an anti-slavery party its mission was to stop the spread of slavery into the new western territories with the aim of abolishing it entirely. Completely different framing here. The Democratic Party did all these things. The Republican Party just was just formed just to stop the spread of slavery. If you really want to frame it like this, you could also frame it as the founding of the Democratic Party was a pro-democracy party because thanks to the founding, uh, founding leader, Andrew Jackson, yeah, Andrew Jackson. It was because of him that the United States removed the requirement for voters to own property. So, Democratic Party, pretty pro-democracy. Why do you hate democracy, Professor Swain? What's up with that? At the time, largest expansion in voting rights for all of America. Granted, you had to be white, but... <laughs> But but it was still a thing. Now, you and I know when you frame it like that, we're leaving out a hell of a lot about Andrew Jackson. It's almost like these things are a little more complex than you can fit in a PragerU video. And it's almost like this video is, is already being framed in a 
horribly disingenuous way. And everyone watching this can tell. And you know it, don't you? Carol Swain did a lot of political activism against BLM, mostly doing their Marxists. Oh my God. If you have a link for that, please, please link it. I want to see it. This effort, however, was dealt a major blow by the Supreme Court in the 1857 case, Dred Scott versus Sandford. Ah. The court ruled that slaves aren't citizens, they're property. The seven justices who voted in favor of slavery, all Democrats. The two justices who dissented, both Republicans. This is all true. Sometimes these Prager U things, they load a bunch of stuff into it before they get to the point. And then as, as I'm like looking through it in the video and picking through it, it's like I forgot how this path started because they just load so much into it. The slavery question was, of course, ultimately resolved by a bloody civil war. The commander in chief during that war was the first Republican president, okay, Abraham yeah. Lincoln, the man who freed the slaves. Six days after the Confederate army surrendered, <clears throat> John Wilkes Booth. Oh, you just like jumped through a whole decade of time here. A Democrat assassinated okay. President Lincoln. John Wilkes Booth was a Democrat. Wow, left wing destroyed. <laughs> Do I need to, like, address this? It's kind of astounding that this is, like, being portrayed as a gotcha or an argument. This one guy was a member of a political party that doesn't really have very strict requirements to join that will literally just take anyone. Okay, wow, you got him. Lincoln's vice president, a Democrat named Andrew Johnson, assumed the presidency. But Johnson adamantly opposed Lincoln's plan to integrate the newly freed yes. slaves into the South's okay, we economic do get into and it. social order. Johnson and the Democratic Party were unified in their opposition to the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery. Oh, okay, so you don't talk about Reconstruction. Again, leaving out some details, Andrew Johnson, really, really fucking bitter about the whole we're succeeding from the union and starting a confederacy thing but he didn't really do enough or anything <laughs> about it oh wait you you gave me the link oh no she's she's been on one america network i don't like where this is going and social america sign on to the black lives matter movement some in the black community are pushing back one america chanel rian has that report Dr. Carol Swain, advisory board member of Black Voices for Trump, told One American News she has long viewed Black Lives Matter as a destructive force in America, a force using and abusing all black lives. But it's very clear to me that the Black Lives Matter organization is about And Billy Jean is playing in the background. Well, how convenient for One American Network. You can't really quote this against us because we're playing Billy Jean in the background. Fuck it, we'll do Black it. Black Lives Matter organization is about something much bigger than black people, that it really is pushing a socialist, Marxist, agenda with four advanced fucking incoherent rambling holy shit degrees including from yale and chapel hill north carolina as a former vanderbilt professor of law swain is former <laughs> well versed in critical race theory a theory swain says that misframes the conversation about race in america resulting in the absolute absence of actual discourse White people are so confused in America, and uh, I hate to say it like that, but I don't know any other way to say it. They want to signal to black people that they care, and the only way they feel like they can do that is agree with the slogan, which is a true statement that black lives matter in the same way that all lives matter, white lives matter. And she's nodding like this means something. <laughs> Brown lives matter, but they can't separate the slogan and the fact statement from an organization that has a goal that I believe that's ultimately destructive to America, no matter how it sanitizes itself. Swain returns to the fallacy inherent in the critical race theory and Marxism that Black Lives Matter clings to. Okay, I think we may have seen enough about the kind of person 
we are dealing with here. Thank you for sharing this. Now I feel kind of mean. Now it kind of feels like if we continue, we're just going to be like, oh boy. We're picking on someone without a full deck up here. Notice that everyone in the background was white. When they argue that racism is permanent. If it's permanent, there's nothing you can do about it. That white skin is property. And so that means that people that just happen to be born white, they have this property that gives them advantages over other people. Oh man, I could see why she may have lost her professorship. <laughs> Johnson and the Democratic Party were unified in their opposition to the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery, the 14th Amendment, which gave blacks citizenship, and the 15th Amendment, which gave blacks the vote. Okay. All three passed only because of universal Republican support. Yeah, and, and, uh, and they won the fucking war. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> During the era of Reconstruction, federal troops stationed in the South helped secure rights for the newly freed slaves. Hundreds Let's of black men were elected to Southern state legislatures as Republicans and 22 black Republicans served uh, in the U.S. Congress by 1900. The Democrats did not elect a black man to Congress until 1935. I mean, yeah, that historically tracks, you know, one party supports abolishing slavery, the other didn't. At the time, I would add, Reconstruction was 1877. Okay, so that's uh, 150 years ago. But after Reconstruction nope. ended, when the federal troops went home, Democrats roared back into power in the South. They quickly reestablished white supremacy mm. across the region. Oh, reestablished? No, it never left. With measures like black codes, laws that restricted the ability of blacks to own property <clears throat> and run businesses, yep. and they imposed poll taxes and literacy mm -hmm. tests used to subvert it's black true. citizens' right to vote. This is all true. One thing I want to add about literacy tests, every once in a while you hear someone ask like, what's wrong with this? This seems like a good idea. And the problem with that is historically in the United States, um, literacy tests, not always a literacy test, sometimes it's just like it asks like, like trivia or something. They wouldn't give tests to the white people, like at all. They would selectively give them to the black people. And the questions on the tests would be like bizarre trivia that you could only expect like maybe 2% of people to even know the answer to. And it wouldn't be just like one question. It would be like, it'd be like 20. Can you pass this literacy test designed to disenfranchise African-American? Okay, state of Louisiana literacy test. First, first thing, draw a line around the number or letter of the sentence. Okay, easy. Draw a line under the last word in this line. Cross out the longest word in this line. Longest. Draw a line around the shortest word in this line. A. Pretty straightforward. I wouldn't expect like the typical person in school to get some of these. Spell backwards forwards. What? Print the word vote upside down, but in the correct order. Like a mirror image? I guess. Print a word that looks the same whether it's printed frontwards or backwards. Wow. Write down on the line provided what you read in the triangle below. Paris in the, in the, the spring. Oh, see that? There's a the and a the there. That's a common trick. A lot of people's brains don't um, comprehend when you put the at the end of a sentence and then the next line does at the start. Yeah, not end of a sentence, end of the line. Double the, a lot of people's brains automatically process it as a singular the. But if you get that wrong, you fail the test. One single failure, mean you can't vote. Divide a vertical line in two equal parts by bisecting it with a curved horizontal line that is only straight at its spot bisection of the vertical. Can you do this? I don't think you can do this. Write every other word in this line and print every third word in the same line. Original type smaller and first line ended at comma, but capitalize the fifth word that you write. This test started not so bad, and then it's just very quickly incoherent. I don't know what what's going on. I've seen some other ones that ask like really bizarre questions like what day of what year was the Constitution of Mississippi first signed? Nobody fucking knows that. Let's carry on used to subvert black citizens' right to vote. And how is all of this enforced? By terror. By the KKK Mo showing up outside of polling places, wanting to intimidate black people to stop them from voting. Much of it instigated by the Ku Klux Klan 
founded by a Democrat, yep. Nathan Bedford Forrest. As historian Eric Foner, himself a Democrat, notes, in effect, the Klan was a military force serving the interests of the Democratic Party. President Woodrow Wilson, a Democrat, shared many views with the Klan. He resegregated many federal agencies and even screened the first movie ever played oh, at we the get White this. House, the racist film, The Birth of a Nation. Yes, all of this is true. I've known this because I studied film at film and theater at college. This movie was awful. This is a three hour long movie. At the time, movies weren't three hours long. Most movies at the time were really short. A lot of other movie directors and creators were like, oh, you have to keep the movie short. You have to keep the movie short because audiences don't want to don't want to sit here for hours and watch a movie. And D.W. Griffith said, no, it's not true. People are smart. People aren't stupid. They'll watch if you have a good movie, people want to watch it. And because of the success of Birth of a Nation, yeah, a lot of other movies started being long hour movie, multiple hour long movies. Because of this, we can thank Birth of a Nation for having long movies, longer than 20 minutes. Uh, horrible, horrible. But that's, that's American history, baby. At the end of Birth of a Nation, after they terrorize all the black people and scare them from voting and running and being in the Senate, Jesus Christ comes down from heaven and blesses the KKK. I am not making that up. That's that's how the movie ends. Yup. Entitled The Klansman. A few decades later, the only serious congressional opposition to the landmark Civil Rights Act of 1964 came from Democrats. 80% of Republicans in Congress supported the bill, less than 70% of Democrats did. So that's still a majority for each party. <laughs> what? They were opposed by nay votes from six Republicans and 21 Democrats. Yep, because they would have had a Democratic majority um, at the time. Democratic senators <clears throat> filibustered the bill for 75 days until Republicans mustered the few extra votes needed to break the log jam. Glossing over... Lyndon B. Johnson. It really is kind of understated how much of like a political genius Johnson was. Wasn't he responsible for getting the other Republicans to vote by whipping his dick out in front of them? <laughs> Something like that. And when all of their efforts to enslave blacks, keep them enslaved, and then keep them from voting had failed, the Democrats came up with a new strategy. If Welfare. black people are going to vote, they might as well vote for Democrats as President Lyndon Johnson was purported to have said about the Civil Rights Act, I'll have them as voting Democrat for 200 years. Wait, so you're admitting he's, he's behind the Civil Rights Act? You're admitting this is Democrats doing? You're arguing against yourself? You're trying to make it seem bad by putting nah here, but put aside the bad taste of that. This argument goes against your previous claims. Did he really say this? Snope says it's unproven. So, I know, I know. Snopes is also radical BLM Antifa Marxists. I know. So now, we'll give it to you. the Democratic Party prospers on the votes of the very people it has spent much of its history oppressing. Do you think that means maybe they realized they were in the wrong and everybody who was alive 150 years ago fucking died like Rush Limbaugh, like the cucks they were? And now new people came along and were like, hey, that's that old stuff is pretty fucked up. Maybe we should do this new stuff. Democrats falsely claim that the Republican nah. Party is the villain when in reality... I mean, nowadays, yes. It's the failed policies of the Democratic Party Kay. that have kept blacks down. When in reality, it's the policies of the Democrats. Five minutes in and everything she's mentioned is over 50 years ago. Most of it over a hundred years ago. Pretty much all of it is true, but it's like the conclusions that are being drawn from it, this is not academic. This is not how things logically follow. You describe these things, therefore something that's not substantiated from it. Okay. Massive government welfare has decimated the black family. Opposition to school- Oh, she's not gonna give us anything substantiating that. Choice has kept them trapped 
and failing schools. Stupid argument, but we're not here to talk about school choice. We were here to talk about the Democratic Party. But let me continue to virtue signal dumb conservatives who like to watch this crap. Politically correct policing has left black neighborhoods yeah. defenseless against violent crime. How does that follow? Defenseless against violent crime. I'm sorry. I thought we were pro-gun on this channel. I didn't think you were a fucking commie. Professor Swain. <sighs> so when you think about racial equality and civil rights, which political party should come to mind? The Black Panther Party. I'm Carol Swain, professor of political science and law at Vanderbilt University for Prager University. This one's kind of weak. <laughs> to keep our videos free, click here. Look at her fucking face. Thanks for watching. To keep our videos free, click here. What is going on inside her head? When I started this, I said, like, look at her eyes and the way she talked and delivered those first few lines. Something, something weird's going on. And then she's talking about BLM or socialist Marxists. I'm going to Google her now and I'm going to find out she's had, like, brain surgery and I'm going to feel so bad. Hold on, personal life. I want to look real quick. Okay, I don't see. Oh, no. Oh, fuck. All right, I'm sorry. Upon being divorced, Swain attempted to commit suicide by, fall by swallowing pills. Okay, maybe there is some damage here. I'm sorry. Kind of mean of me. During this period, she was a Jehovah's Witness. What the fuck? As a young girl, she became a devout Jehovah's Witness. At the time, many in that church believed the world would end in 1975. Swain was among them. Oh. Oh my god. 1998, Swain was baptized into the Pentecostal faith after hearing an internal voice when she thought she was dying at a hospital. Oh lord. Let's look at this a little bit more, see if there's anything else here. Do we have systematic racism in America today? The systematic racism, if we have it today, it's a racism now that is against white people. Oh, come on. Also didn't talk about the Southern strategy with Nixon and how the Democratic South flipped Republican. Maybe that's just another Marxist conspiracy, right? I am one of those BLM Antifa Marxists, I guess. She talks about that in The Truth About the Republican Party. She denies it happened. Oh no, there's more? So final point, almost no mention of the contemporary Democratic Party. She had to reach back very far for a majority of her criticisms. And the only actual mentions of contemporary Democrats are policies of welfare, school choice, and politically correct policing. No actual explanation for any of these things, but hey, it wouldn't be a PragerU video if we actually got that. Kind of feels like PragerU's taking advantage of someone with severe mental issues, just, just so they can say, hey, look, uh, we found a black conservative who's gonna talk about the racist history of the Democratic Party. You could have just like left it at that. Like you could have just said, this is the origins of the Democratic Party and like leave it at that. And it would have been a better video than this. Because if you just say, this is the history, it's like, okay, it's just a straight history lesson. But couldn't, couldn't just leave it at that. I had to add little bits about, oh, actually the, the Republicans did this too. Modern Democrats support welfare and that's fucked over black people. You gave it away by doing that. She's done five PragerU videos. And some of them are also in the top view, so we're gonna get to them very soon. I'd like to give a thanks to the January patron backers. Dios, Elsie Hupp, George, Jari Palamo, Laura Day, Megan Squires, Mellow Cheddar, Schwartz, and Xylorp and Bandcamp. Thank you all so much. You may not realize it, when you're currently funding Marxist Black Lives Matter. Thanks again. Uh, click a link. Click a video, click a link. It all helps. Like, like and subscribe. Join the Discord. Do whatever. Doesn't really matter to me. I mean, I appreciate it regardless. But, you know, in the end, these are all numbers on a screen. These are all pixels.